the front. <laughs> Figuratively, he bites as hard as he can. Okay. And of course, when he puts his fangs into you, you certainly feel it. I think it pretty much done his bite. <laughs> Bite. Of course, when he puts his fangs into you, you certainly feel it. I think it pretty much done his bite. <laughs> You know, I've warned you, sometimes our people disagree with you, but, mm. I mean, I understand some of your approach. I mean, mm. sometimes we take a hard bite. Mm. It helps us as police. Nowadays, when I listen to you, I even panic. Why? Maybe, hey, why do you panic? The way, the way you, uh, uh, Papa, you know Papa. <laughs> Figuratively, he bites as hard as he can. <laughs> okay. And of course, when he puts his fangs into you, you certainly feel it. I think it pretty much done his bite. <laughs> You know, I've warned you, sometimes our people disagree with you, but, mm. I mean, I understand. You know Papa. <laughs> Figuratively, he bites as hard as he can. Okay. And of course, when he puts his fangs into you, you certainly feel it. I think it pretty much done his bite. <laughs> You know, I've warned you, sometimes our people disagree with you, but mm. I mean, I understand some of your approach. I mean, mm. sometimes we take a hard bite. Mm. It helps us as police. Nowadays, when I listen to you, I even panic. Why? Maybe. Hey, why do you panic? The way, the way you... Uh, uh, Papa. You know Papa. <laughs> Figuratively, he bites as hard as he can. <laughs> okay. And of course, when he puts his fangs into you, you certainly feel it. I think it pretty much done his bite. <laughs> You know, I've warned you, sometimes our people disagree with you, but mm. I mean, I understand some of your approach. I mm. mean, sometimes we take a hard bite. Mm. It helps us as police. Nowadays, when I listen to you, I even panic. Why? Maybe. Hey, why do you panic? The way, the way you... Uh, uh, Papa. You know Papa. <laughs> Figuratively, he bites as hard as he can. <laughs> okay. And of course, when he puts his fangs into you, you certainly feel it. I think it pretty much done his bite. <laughs> Sunrise. Johnny's bite. Johnny's bite.
Dance Sunrise. You know, I've warned you sometimes our people disagree with you, but mm. I mean, I understand some of your approach. I mean, mm. sometimes we take a hard bite. Mm. It helps us as politicians. Nowadays, when I listen to you, I even panic. Why? Maybe, hey, why do you panic? The way, the way you, uh, uh, Papa, you know Papa. <laughs> Figuratively, he bites as hard as he can. Okay. And of course, when he puts his fangs into you, you certainly feel it. I think it could watch Johnny's bite. <laughs> Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbi Alameen. Has been Allah and Ima Wakil. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? And ye though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you art with me. Thy rod and thy salvation, uh, they comfort me. Thou prepares the table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cap ran over, and surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Assalamu alaikum. It's Thursday. Welcome to Johnny's Bite. Apologies for the late start. It was due to a technical issue, but the technicians worked around the clock to fix it. And we are grateful to them. And in like manner, we would like to call on our friends at ECG because we have had numerous complaints about the fact that people are not able to recharge. And sometimes when... Uh, those who go and buy around 20 CDs and all of that, it, it becomes difficult for them to to go back and ask for it, their issues to be fixed because those who buy 20 CDs and below or so do not get receipts issued for them, etc. So, uh, good morning to you, lawyer Mahama and the ECG team. It's important that you pay attention to this one. I'd like to send a very special good morning to Jonathan Syme of ADB Bukom Boxing Arena branch and the team. Fantastic work you're doing there. Now, I've seen a photo of lawyer Martin Pebu being, is it interacted with or confronted? Decide which one you want to use. With a woman pointing the left hand at, uh, pointing, raising the forefinger of the left hand at Mr. Martin Pebu. If you know Martin Pebu and you have ever interacted with him once, twice, or thrice, you would know that he would not stop at asking the questions. He will ask the questions. Because Madame Cecilia Dapa believes she has a strong case. So why are you engaging those who are in, in, involved in the commentary? The optics are not good, as Helen will say. The, 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 the thought is not good. That you have money stashed in your home under your bed is not good. And we have had explanations in the past that there was a money in a sports bag, there was money in a, a box with a, a padlock in front, all those things. It's not good. I have personally said that me, Madam Cecilia Adapa, Madame PJ, the, the few of the women in MPP at the top that I, had, I so much admired. I still do. But if you listen to some of the explanations, and Koye, the youth are not happy, they are angry. And when you find a, a, a certain attempt or approach to say defend and deny and defend and deny, it becomes problematic. Take me to Volta region. <clears throat> it's a dumb spillage. I've seen a statement from the Volta River Authority say, oh, they have given the people some relief items, mattress, rice, the usual nadmo stuff. My home has been washed away. You are giving me raw rice to go and cook it in whose house? I don't know why our disaster management and relief system is always about rice and oil. We always think people are hungry. And that is, for me, insulting. Very, very disrespectful and insulting. What happened to warm meals? Don't we watch American movies? What happened to warm blankets and shelters? So we give them advance notice. You give them advance notice to move where? Did you provide alternate accommodation, tents at higher grounds where you're asking them to move to? People's homes have been submerged. Yesterday, one of my mates from school called me and said that, look, Johnny, the situation has gotten out of hand. Buildings are collapsing. Called from Batomepe, 
The buildings are collapsing. It's, it, this is dangerous. People's homes are being washed away in this manner. And when you go and give them rice and blankets and chaliwate and buckets, to do what exactly? To do what exactly? Those who decide, they say, oh, the youth are lazy. The youth are coconut head. They have nothing in their heads. They say, okay, we are young people. We want to go into fish farming. So we are setting up our own cages so that we can start our tilapia stuff on the Volta Lake. Now we have spilled the dam. Everything has been washed away. I'm told about 43 million Ghana cities worth of, of, of investment have been washed away. So what do we want the people to do? Our president has left Accra. He's going outside the country once again to speak. He will speak impeccable English. He will speak to the world and they will applaud him. He will tell them what reforms need to be done out there and they will applaud him. But in his own backyard, when his people are being carried away by water, he has refused to speak to his people. But Nana Kufuado forgets that it is because of the people. That is why he is president. And he kept begging us to elect him into office. He has forgotten that if he had not been the power of the people, he would not be president. And that on that basis, nobody would have invited him out there to speak at UNAU, whatever it is, as Nana Kufuado candidate, Nana Kufuado of the MPP. He has forgotten. The last time the president spoke to us, aside the fellow Ghanaians' COVID-19 updates, the last time he spoke to us as press men, senior editors and editors, was in 2019. The president has not spoken to us again. But he was the one while in opposition saying that democracy is, uh, communication must happen, democracy is, he's, he's, he's the one. He has refused to speak to the people. And he has been particularly unfair to the people in the Volta region. When the Ketu South, uh, Angloga, and, and uh, Keta tidal wave thing happened, he kept quiet. He has never visited the place. This is happening. He is ready to jump out of the country to go. He will never speak to his people, nor will he go there. But we all know the truth that this is happening and this is beyond the capacity of the National Disaster Management Organization. An organization that can't manage its own disaster. That I, Johnny Hughes, had to fight for them to get ID cards. The only thing they had to identify them as not more representative was, their, was their, their reflectors. This is the Church of Pentecost you are seeing there, submerged in water. The home of the assemblyman, people's homes, people's investments, like that. This requires an immediate presidential intervention. Our president is not interested. Our minister for works and housing is not interested. Our minister for national security is not interested. Our minister for sanitation and water resources is not interested. She's busy fighting how house girls stole up to $1 million in her house without her notice. They only caught the person because they saw the person in the room. That is our Ghana today. That is our Ghana today. You're asking the people to move. Move and go where? I told you, the places around Amutinu, Agaveji, Salakope, all those places, they are facing their own challenges. The other time, somebody showed me a hotel. And I've, I've been to that place because we went for a training. And I, the hotel, fantastic. Now, the hotel is under siege. So, along the coast, they are suffering. Then the Volta Lake is also hitting them because we open. And, and the VRA needs to wake up before they do another spillage. They need to have a residual plan of accommodation for these people of Ghana. Their homes are collapsing. Their businesses are being washed away. Their lives are in the balance. If I were president of the republic, I would have paused and spoken to them. When things happen outside the country, 
Our president is the first to tweet. When things happen outside the country, he's the first to tweet. Typical of a father whose children is hungry at home or are hungry at home, and then he picks money to go and do show in the beer bar. That is how our president is behaving. It is sad. He has not paused for a second, I'm telling you, to speak to the people who are going through this. He has not written a statement. He has not tweeted. Let it happen in Côte d'Ivoire. He will be the first to tweet. And he will speak French. La Jean n'est pas le bruit. He will be the first. Our president. Who, look. Put, put the tweet up for me, Sixtus. Thank you. This is Nana Dodankwe Kufuado. He says, on behalf, on, on behalf and people of Ghana, I extend my deepest condolences to the King Mohammed the Sith and to the government and the people of the Kingdom of Morocco on the tragedy which has been occasioned by Friday's earthquake and has claimed the lives of thousands. We pray for the families of whatever. Somebody comes under a unit of fury, says the economic hardship in this country is more tragic than the earthquake disaster in Morocco. Have you extended your greatest condolences to us for voting for you blindly? Fix the economic mess here and stop the face look look. Our president, he's quick, always quick, always quick to respond to other people's plight. The people who he swore an oath, I shall protect the public purse. I will protect you. I will, it, we put power in his hands. When his people are suffering, he leaves them. He is going to the United States to make flowery speeches written by speech makers. Maybe plagiarized lines again. Involved in that. You have a president who doesn't care about it. Put, put the images up there again. The flood. Let the people see. And the people are complaining. They are bitter. They are bitter. Chief of staff, good morning to you. You are a mother. You are a grandmother. People are being washed away. Look at the homes. Collapsed. What do you have to say about it? Our president, and there's record to show that our president is always interested in other people's matters, but his own people's matters. It's not good. It is not good at all, I'm telling you. I hate to see people suffer. And especially when I don't have the capacity to help them out of their place. Somebody will come and ask, now what are you doing about it? What am I doing about it? Am I, do I have the capacity to do anything about this? That is why we have emergency response in this country. That is why they take out the people's taxes. That is why we set up institutions and organize. So if you come and ask me, my duty is to point it out to the people because the people who have the capacity to fix the mess that is happening are pretending not to see it. Our president is going to make speech. Our presidential reporter will bring the speech. It will be played on TV and radio. Fully edited speech given to us to play. His people are suffering. He won't see, but I thank God that people around the world will see Johnny's bite. People wake up at dawn to watch it in many different countries, for which I'm particularly grateful. Tweet at the president. Tell him that your backyard is dirty, Mr. President. I'm busy going to the United States. Go. Let your people die. When you come back, we will see who will give you fans here. Because out there, you get people to play Dondo and Nana Bidia to Asante will be dancing behind you. Eshie, 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 rado, rado, rado. Now, please play for me Dr. Nyahonya Otamaklo's video. Yesterday, Captain Dr. Nyahonya Otamaklo retired. And Brigadier General Nunu Mensah, they held a joint press conference. For those of you who don't know, Brigadier General Nunu Mensah was one time campaign manager for Nana Dodankwe Kufado. It was Dr. Nyahonya Otamaklo who, when Nana failed, to so hit the 50% plus one huh? at the MPP primaries that they convinced Alan Tremanting to step down for Nana Dodankwe Kufwadu. 
And he said, he told me personally how Mr. Francis Poku, then security capo and etc., were involved in that conversation. And they told him that, you see what has been done for you and in your interest when you go there, remember what has been done today and deliver excellently. He said that Nanado that he knew then is not the Nanado that he's seeing now. Play the video. We need all those individuals who constantly spoke truth to power some years ago to emerge from their self-imposed exile to speak to government, speak to the government we have now. Where are the Otabils? Duncan Williams, Reverend Marty, Archbishop Palmer Buckle, Doug Heward Mills, the many civil society organizations and critical journalists. We need to speak to truth to power to help maintain peace we have in this country so far. Any failure to go by the tenets of our own democratic principles will turn this country upside down. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That was Dr. Nyaho Nyaho Tabakul. There's another video, six, if you find it for me. Uh, he spoke about the fact that he and Brigadier General Nunu Mensa were campaign managers for Nanado Dankwe Kufado. Self-imposed. In fact, in the old age of ours, we don't sleep soundly at night. Ghana has been riddled with perceived corruption of political public office holders, amassing unexplained wealth, tribalism, nepotistic and parochial in their interests, especially under this regime of President Akufo Adu. How do ministers hold statues of cash in foreign and local currencies in their homes? Acquire properties in prime areas of Accra and other parts of the country. Drive the most luxurious cars and live extravagantly and expect our youth who remain largely without meaningful employment to be satisfied. That's the question. Take me to Kejetia. They are re-echoing the same sentiments. In the Ashanti region, the market people, they are echoing the same sentiment. Listen to them. Have even lost their businesses, capital, and pine down at homes with various ailments. If the phase two of the project can come to the abrupt stop, what is the hope for this phase three of this project? To see the light of day, so to bring relief to petty traders who find themselves at the mercies, the harsh weather, and extortion from people. Why is it that one if about Asante region, major projects, this Lakadasika approach is attached to it? We have been quiet for too long. Time to speak is now. If all projects will come to a halt, then we will be convinced, convinced things are bad for government. But if it is picked and choose which projects get halted, and almost all in Ashanti region, then we believe there is a conspiracy against us in Ashanti region. Let no one tell us, oh, the project has been started. We have been neglected for far too long. We need personalities who can speak for Ashanti mind interest, not personal interest, or any other interest, that is what we seek for. These are the same market women who heralded Nana Dodankwe Kufado into office. Today they are complaining, their businesses are collapsing, people are dying. They are projects, so we are spending money to build Bank of Ghana. And they say their businesses are dying. What, what profit will Bank of Ghana bring? They will bring us 60.8 billion CDs loss. They will, that's what they will bring to us. Let me leave it here. 
But do you call me now? We'll do community voices. 055-924-2717 and 055-691-0154. 055-924-2717 and 055-691-0154. Call me. Tell me what's happening in your community. Call me and tell me what exactly is going on in your community. 055-691-0154. Good morning. Good morning, Jenny. Yes, sir. Clifford, talk to me. Speak up. Yeah. Hello? Go ahead. Yeah, Jenny. 